We have been looking for many years for a Sunday law to be enacted in our land. And now that the movement is right upon us, we ask, will our people do their duty in the matter? Can we not assist in lifting the standard and in calling to the front those who have a regard for their religious rights and privileges? Welcome to another Last Day Events study as they are being fulfilled all around us. We want to praise God for giving us an opportunity again to see with the spiritual eye selves what are transpiring in our world today and how close we are to the second coming of Jesus Christ. We believe the second coming is indeed imminent based on the signs of the times. Let's pray. Loving Lord, Father God in heaven, we want to thank you again for opening our eyes to the signs of the times that are taking place all around us. So as we spend a moment again looking at what your word has to say and current events, we pray for your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, at the heart of the Ten Commandments, beginning in verse 8, the Bible reminds the children of Israel, or God reminds the children of Israel about who it was that saved them out of Egypt. The Bible begins by saying in Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Who is that God who is commending us to keep the seventh day holy? Well, in verse 11, it says, For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord bless the seventh day, or the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. So it identifies the God who committed them, the creator of heaven and earth. This is where we find the seal of God. Since this is the commandment out of the Ten Commandments that identifies the true God among the so-called gods out there, and since this is the seal of God, we must expect, as we are told, Satan to wage war against this commandment by introducing a counterfeit Sabbath commandment in these last days. The Pope tells the world last year that the Sunday law has become global. And this year, we have been experiencing the Sunday law that the Pope refers to back then, to the nations, when he addressed them, when he made that statement, he was addressing the entire world, that the Sunday law has become global. Well, the majority of us didn't really understand what he meant, and we did not know what was coming, how they were going to implement it. But today, we are seeing it with our own eyes. The Sunday law has indeed become global. Notice on the screen what this article tells us here. From Czech Radio, fresh measures, night curfew, Sunday shop closures, and more work from home. October 28, 2020. Strict new measures aimed at bringing the coronavirus epidemic under control came into force. Notice the word force. On Wednesday, October 28th, the government has enforced a night curfew between 9 p.m. and 5 a.m. Employers have been asked to employ home office wherever possible, food and other stores selling essential goods, which still remain open, have to be closed on Sundays. And I covered this last Sabbath, showing that this is the Sunday law here. That's the reason why they are telling people to work from home. It's not about a virus. It's about climate. 
It's about the climate change. They say work from home that would help cut back on carbon dioxide. That's exactly what the Pope said last year. The Sunday law or the common good has become global. Notice on the screen what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. God made the world in six days and rested on the seventh, sanctifying this day and setting it apart from all others as holy to himself to be observed by his people throughout their generations. But the man of sin, exalting himself above God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself to be God, taught to change times and laws, this power, thinking to prove that it was not only equal to God, but above God, changed the rest day, placing the first day of the week where the seventh should be, and the Protestant world has taken this child of the papacy, Sunday law, to be regarded as sacred in the word of God. This is called her fornication. Daniel chapter 7 prophesied, verse 25, prophesied that this man of sin has attempted to change the laws of God, especially during the dark ages. He shall think to change times and laws. But the same verse also says, because the saints of God will not observe that first day of the week, that counterfeit Sabbath. The Bible says he wears out the saints of God, meaning persecutes the saints of God because they would not observe Sunday. The Sunday law, one more time, has become global this year under the umbrella of a pandemic. Notice on the screen, this tells us here from Cook's Magazine, October 30th, 2020, Pope cancels general audiences as COVID cases rise in Italy. As the number of coronavirus cases continues to climb in Italy and the government rolls out tighter restrictions, the Vatican is also taking steps to stop the spread, including the suspension again of all public papal events. I thought they said, if we were to stay home for 14 days, they would be able to flatten the curve of this virus. I thought they said, if we were to wear masks, that would also take care of this virus. It has been how many months now? Eight months, nine months into this pandemic. None of what they told us would work is working. Well, it's not about a virus as we just read a moment ago. This is about climate change. This is about putting you on lockdowns as UK right now has gone back into lockdowns. Many nations in Europe right now have gone back into lockdowns and other countries, including United States of America, some states are looking into going back into lockdowns. Now you see that the mask they've been telling us to wear that will take care of everything. You see that it does not work. This is not about mask. Why would the cases be going up if the mask, as they have told us, really work? And now Fauci is saying that we're going to have to wear masks even after a coronavirus vaccine. Even after that, we're going to have to wear masks until the end of 2021 or even into 2022. It is not about a virus. This is about the global common good that the Pope told us last year that has become viral or global. Notice the next one. This tells us here from Vatican News, October 30th, 2020. COVID, through a common evil, what must happen? We discover the what? The common good. Pope Francis is certain of this and is repeating it to everyone. We will emerge either better or worse after the pandemic. The global crisis requires that the parameters of human coexistence be what? We thought how? Through the lens of solidarity. Based on this foundational idea, 
the COVID-19 Building a Healthier Future has been created in collaboration with the Dicastery for Promoting Integral Human Development to offer a vision that might lead to the beginning of a new fraternity. What else? After the pandemic. Those words we just read here from this article, those were the almost the very exact words that the Pope used last year. Now keep in mind, this is dealing with not only the virus and the common good, and the common good is the Sunday law. Now we know, again, the lockdowns, the wearing of masks is not really about flattening the curve of the virus, it's about climate change. Now those words, again, we just read, I'm going to take you now to what the Pope says last year, back in May, when he said, the common good has become global. You're going to see almost the exact words. Notice, back to the screen. Headline from CNA, Catholic News Agency. Pope Francis said, the common good has become global. Pope Francis called on nations, notice the word, to work toward a global common good, particularly in confronting what? Climate change. The common good has become global and nations must associate for their own benefit. Notice now, noting that some nations today have a spirit of opposition rather than cooperation. The Pope called building the common good of humanity a necessary, and what else? Essential element for the world balance. Essential elements? for the world balance? Again, where have we been seeing or even uh, hearing about essential? That word has become a curse to us in these last days, especially this year. Essential, there is what they call essential items that you can buy or non-essential items that you cannot buy. But again, as I shared last time in regard to this Sunday law, it's very similar to the blue laws. The blue laws tell us, mandate us what we can and cannot buy on Sunday. Today, they put them under the umbrella of a new word, a new way, essential. You cannot buy this, you cannot buy that because that's not essential. It's the Sunday law that has become global, we are seeing here. Again, the lockdowns are not about a virus. It's about cutting back carbon dioxide. And that is you. It's not the animals. They are putting on lockdowns. It's human beings. They said that are polluting the planet. Notice, back to the screen, article goes on to say, Pope Francis said that, when a supranational common good is clearly identified, as in the case of what now again? Climate change or human trafficking, it necessitates a special legal authority capable of facilitating solutions. The Pope warned against, what's the word? Nationalism that raises walls or leads to anti-Semitism or hatred of others. When the Pope talked about nationalism, what is he referring to? Remember, we looked at this yesterday, he's dealing with individualism. Those who are not trying to get involved or be a part of this global reset, of this new world order, of this global common good. Now, he used the expression, those that are building walls. What does wall represent in the Bible? The law of God. But again, he's saying that you cannot be on the sideline. You have to join us. What did we look at yesterday? Notice this article. It says, the troubling consequences of rugged individualism. Rugged individualism? 
Remember again, it is the same context here when the Pope tells us that there are some who are trying to put nationalism before the common good. But again, another article that we looked at where the Pope again says, the headline was, Fratelli Tutti, Summary of Pope Francis, Social Encyclical. Notice, a fraternal society, therefore, will be one that promotes educating in dialogue in order to defeat the what now? The virus, what kind of virus? Of radical individualism. This is not about coronavirus. This is about the virus of individualism. That means those who are in opposition to the coming good, to the new reset, to the new world order. Then again, the article went on to tell us, you're going to see the association there with individualism and the common good. It says, the United States has proved the days of exceptionalism are over. A rugged individualism baked into the nation's founding, notice overworking, for the common good and the pandemic fatigue, even as there's no end in sight to the carnage, it made me wonder about the last time our sprawling, notice, populous country really sacrificed as a whole for the common good. So they want you to sacrifice your individualism, the ability to think for yourself, and also according to your convictions. They want you to lay aside the teaching of the Bible and join the common good. So let's go back. So when the Pope tells us here that the common good has become global, then again it says, Pope Francis said that when a supranational common good is clearly identified, as in the case of climate change, as in the case of the virus, we might say, or human trafficking, it necessitates a special legal authority capable of facilitating solutions. The Pope warned against nationalism that raises walls or leads to anti-Semitism or hatred of others. Revelation chapter 12 verse 17 tells us, and the dragon was rough with the woman and went to make war with the remnant of a seed. The individualism, those who are thinking for themselves, those who are not obeying the laws of the land that are in contradiction with the laws of God, and then the dragon will make war with them. Last Sabbath, I also share with you how again, in Africa, they are calling for this common good that has become global to be enacted by November 7th. Let me take you back to the screen. Notice, this was from the second annual WACO Global Conference. Again, November 7th is when they will have their meeting, the Climate Emergency Action Plan, declaring a universal weekly day of rest. For what reason? For the common good. The first ever conference in Africa to introduce a universal weekly day of rest as a solution to the climate crisis. And then the next one tells us here exactly as Spirit of Prophecy tells us what they will use to call for this universal day of rest. They said because of the climate change emergency, we will see more floods, deadly fires, hurricanes, diseases, and earthquakes in places where we least expect. Then skip on down. It says, this coming weekly day of rest will make society rest in a fast-paced world. And notice again, and cause a 15% reduction on carbon emissions at less cost but more time for family and friends. Consequently, our planet and our bodies will get a much needed rest, which will make ourselves healthier and happier for what? For the common good. So they have told us here, the reason why for the lockdowns is to cut back on carbon dioxide. We need a weekly day of rest. Notice back to the screen. Then the next slide we looked at, there's the date again, November 7th, 2020, second annual WACO Global Conference, 
topic, the climate emergency, action plan declaring a universal weekly day of rest for the common good. Let's go to the next slide. Now, I want to focus here a little bit. You notice here, they give you here their Zoom address. Please join our community on Zoom. Zoom address, meeting ID, 937-6079-8659, passcode. And on November 7th, I am encouraging Seventh-day Adventists to log in to this meeting because they have made this public. The information is on the screen. Log in to their Zoom account and bombard them with Bible passages. Show them because we are told at such a crisis as this, we are not supposed to keep silence, to be quiet as they are calling for an extraordinary climate webinar series, restoring a universal weekly rest day for the human fraternity and the planet, very similar to the Pope Laudato Si and his latest encyclical, Fratelli Tutti. Come together, unity, and that's what the crisis, coronavirus pandemic crisis, is about. Unity, coming together as one. One more time. I am encouraging Seventh-day Adventists to log in that they gave us here, November 7th, or whenever they are having their meetings, to bombard them with questions, to bombard them with Bible passages, because we cannot sit in quietude and allow Sunday law to be enacted because the Sunday law will remove your natural rights. Notice on the screen what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here. Are we doing all we can to exalt the law of Jehovah? We should now be doing our very best to defeat this Sunday law. The best way to do this will be to lift up the law of God. And what else? Make it stand forth in all its sacredness. This must be done if the truth triumphs. It must be done because as I stated a moment ago, as the Bible also tells us, those who would not keep Sunday will be killed. We are already experiencing the enactment of the coronavirus. How they are killing people and the coronavirus is not about a virus it's about Sunday law notice on the screen this tells us here from the Christian Post North Korea says Christians executed for owning Bible newborn babies murdered October 31st 2020 a new report has exposed the atrocity done to North Korean Christians arrested for their faith including forced abortions the murder of newborn babies and death by execution for what? Possessing a Bible. More than 200 Christians were identified as victims punished for crimes, including religious practice, religious activities in China, possessing religious items, contact with religious persons, attempting a place of worship and sharing what else? Religious beliefs. This is what is happening right now as well under the umbrella of a health crisis. This is what's coming as well for not keeping Sunday. Notice it goes on to tell us the report documented the various methods of torture victims endured in North Korea's prison camps, including notice strangulation, starvation, being forced to ingest polluted food, sleep, deprivation, and excessive beating. One former female prisoner recalled, men were beaten like dogs, even in the cell. They screamed like crazy because they hurt so much. Are we ready to stand for Jesus? This is happening now and it will get worse under a Sunday law, under a Sunday law. Notice it goes on to tell us here, in several cases, prisoners found with a Bible, notice, or religious pamphlets were executed by what? 
by a firing squad, while others were locked in electrified cages and fed watery soup. Others were executed for smuggling Bible pages into the country from China from North Koreans to make prayer books. In one instance, a victim found in possession of a Bible was publicly executed in front of over 1,000 people. The victim was tied to a wooden stake and executed by an MPS firing squad. We are back to the Dark Ages again, when the reformers stood up and uphold the Bible and also translating the Bible to the common people. And some of them were burned at the stake publicly. Go to 2 Corinthians with me. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice what the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Are we ready? Again, this is part of the Sunday law that we are experiencing here. Notice what the Bible says. The Bible says, verse 8, We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. That means no matter what happened, I'm going to continue to trust in Jesus Christ. Notice, the article goes on to tell us, another man who had converted to Christianity was allegedly forced into a metal cage that was just three feet high and four feet wide. There were still bars on all four sides that were heated with electricity. He told KFL, usually prisoners lasted only three or four hours in the cage, but I sat there for 12 hours and prayed. I kept praying to God to save us. As the Bible says, verse 11 now, for we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, that the life also of Jesus might be made, notice the word, manifest in our mortal flesh. Well, it's persecution, really, that shows that we indeed belong to Jesus Christ, that shows the life of Jesus is being manifested in us, just like it was manifested on the plain of Dua, just like it was manifested in the lion's den. This is our time. Notice, back to the screen. Next headline here, notice carefully. Australian, four newborn babies die after being denied heart surgery. Why? Due to COVID travel rules, numerous health experts have warned that the impact of coronavirus lockdown measures is having a devastating impact on health with untold deaths due to serious illnesses going untreated. That's the Sunday law era here. Four babies die while what they died from was preventable. But because of the Sunday law that has become global under this pandemic, lockdown restrictions, travel restrictions, those babies could not get the care that they needed and all four of them die. How many people are really dying from the coronavirus? As this says here, untold deaths due to serious illnesses are going untreated. While everybody is focusing on coronavirus, which is less deadly than the common flu. Who is behind this? It is the Pope of Rome. As the Bible says, the God of this world has blinded their mind. Let's go to 2 Corinthians. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Notice, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We need to do this, expose the men of sin, not walking in craftiness, 
nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost in whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. The God of this world has indeed blinded their minds. The papacy gave them the coronavirus. Now all of the governments of this world have become the enemies of their own people, killing their own people. Again, keep in mind, they are putting their own people on like down, killing their own people, as we just read there, those four babies. The God of this world has blinded their minds, but we have this light. We have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God, but not of men. What is that treasure? Jesus Christ. We must proclaim him in these last days. Notice verse 5, For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants, for Jesus' sake. The third angel's message has been given unto us to open the eyes of the blind, those who are being deceived right now by the God of this world. We cannot remain quiet as we see souls are perishing in ignorance if we stay quiet and don't do something right now. As we can see we are experiencing a Sunday law, God will hold us accountable. Let's pray. Loving Lord, Father God in heaven, Thank you, Lord, for revealing to us again where we are in light of Bible prophecies, how the last day events are indeed happening very rapidly. Lord, help us to do our part. Give us courage, strength, faith, increase our faith so that we may not fear what men might do unto us. Forgive us of all our sins, we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.